today I'm going to show you how I installed these recessed LED lights in my ceiling. It was really easy. Let's get started. When you start a project like this, there are a lot of considerations to make. How many lights will there be? Where exactly will they be installed? How will they be wired up? What type or color or style will they be? And what are the costs? Well, since I mentioned the costs, here are the costs for my project, which yours may vary. I had eight six inch diameter LED uh, lights, all canless, 100 feet roughly of 20 gauge copper wire, a hole saw and a dust collector. I didn't have to buy the dust collector. I spent a little bit more than I should have on it probably. But I had a power supply on hand so I didn't spend any money on that. My total cost for this project is less than $150. So here's the plan for this, the recessed lights in the ceiling. Uh, I read that you want to get about one light every 25 square feet. And so for the entire room here that would work out to about uh, 10 lights. However, the first couple joists here are the entryway uh, corridor, and I want to use smaller lights there. And so I really was counting on eight lights from here on in. And so I went through and I used a magnet to find the nails in the ceiling, and that showed me exactly where every joist in the room was. And that was really important to do. So then I discovered uh, for what I call case one. I spaced them about four uh, joists apart. Uh, but that would end up with 10 lights in the room, which would have been a little bit too strong. And then I went back and spaced them out five, uh, every five joists. And that gives me the eight lights. However, in both of these cases, the last light is okay on this side of the room, but on the other side it would be right up against this wall. And that would create a really bright hot spot on the wall. So instead I decided that um, for case three here, I call it eight squeeze. I'm I'm, I squeezed both of these lights into the next joist and I pushed the second lamps over as far as possible right up to this joist. And then these two are pretty much right in the middle of the joists on, on both, uh, both last rows here. And so that gives me eight lights with a little bit extra space on this wall here. And uh, the, the light that's going to be lost over here by moving this one over will be made up for with the lights that are going to be in the corridor. I also, I wanted these to be two feet from this wall because I want light on my stone accent wall here uh, to help highlight it. And I'm also making these three feet from the, the, the nearest walls on the sides, uh, for each one of these. So this is the plan and once you get your joists figured out it's a lot easier to figure out where to put all your lamps in. Alright, so here we go. We're cutting holes in the ceiling for these recessed lights. Got a six and three eighths hole saw from Milwaukee. It's a carbide tip. It actually feels like sandpaper. It doesn't have teeth on it. It cuts really smooth. And this bowl here, uh, dust collector bowl, works great. It's uh, soft and pliable, so as you push on it, it, it traps all the dust inside. So here we go. That one didn't come out so well, it got stuck on the paper. But the last three holes went perfectly, caught all the dust inside, and left with a really nice hole here. I'm using these three colored uh, Halo six inch lights from Home Depot. Uh, I got a real good deal on them by shopping around at different Home Depots. And uh, they got three different colors. Uh, uh, it's like 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 K. And they're Ultra thin, super easy to install. No electric, uh, no no uh, junction box uh, required. It has a junction box here. No can required, uh, and they run at about 36 volts. And they've got a great connector here. So what I'm going to do is make this a low voltage installation, so I don't have to worry about all the 120 volt code. I'm going to throw this out and wire 36 volts directly to here, since it's less than 50 volts. Uh, makes the wiring a lot easier to handle, uh, codes a lot easier to deal with. And these things uh, have these really 
little mouse uh, trap springs on them. We just pop them right in the hole. That easy. Now the wiring, uh, I'm planning to run through uh, the ceiling along the joists and then drop it down behind the crown molding. Again, this is 36 volts and right into my duct there, which goes down to the basement. Then I'll connect it into the switch that way. Super easy wiring job. No need to cut ma massive holes in your drywall or anything like that. One nice thing about this Milwaukee tool is it's got huge holes in it. it makes it really easy to see where you're trying to get that drill tip to. The uh, clear bucket helps a lot too, although it's not so clear after you cut a couple of times uh, the dust collects in there. But you just have to wipe it away with your finger and then you can kind of see through it again to find where your mark is on the ceiling. But yeah, really great. Holds all the dirt in there. So the Drillers Dust Bowl Pro really works well. It's nice and pliable so you can bend it while you're working. And it's easy to clean up in the sink afterwards. Just rinse it right out. So how the light throws uh, light onto the wall depends on the throw of the light. These are ultra wide uh, angle. So you can see it leaves a pretty nice even uh, lighting on the wall there, which uh, is really good. If you have a focused light, it'll leave a darker shadow at the top. Uh, but I like the way that these work. So I think that spacing is just about right to highlight the wall, uh, the stone wall here nicely. So here's the first two ceiling lights uh, turned on. The other ones are all off still. Uh, I just got the wires threaded up through the through the uh, ceiling here, and they're both connected in parallel. There, the wires just running down to uh, one of the boxes here, just to provide a little bit of power, just to see how it looks. So we're going to drill uh, the next hole. Actually, I already drilled the hole up there, and feed a wire through it. And I'm actually thinking it may be possible just to drill straight through the molding without taking it off. That would be awesome if that works. Yes, it is possible. Yes, it was not easy. It was hard to thread the wires behind the molding with all the nails in the way. Speaking of nails, if you do decide that you want to put the wires behind the molding, remember you need to tape the wires up into the corner of the wall so that you don't accidentally put nails through them when you're installing the molding again. Remember, do not do this with 115 volt wiring. It's against code and it's dangerous. This is a low voltage installation here. So for routing the wiring, uh, the wiring goes through these two lights. This one connects to this one in parallel and then it routes through there and I've taken the crown molding off and taped it to the ceiling right in the corner so that when I go to put the uh, crown molding back on. I don't accidentally put the nail through the wire. And then I got extra lazy to see if I could do it this way. I drilled holes up into the ceiling, stuck a wire in there, and then pulled this wire up to connect to parallel with this one, which is also in parallel with that one. And then uh, I pulled that wire back through the molding to the next hole. And this one was also uh, has a hole up into the ceiling so that I could connect in parallel with this and that guy. And then the last one does the same thing. The wire comes over here, connects in parallel with that, which is already connected in parallel with that. And then the wiring routes this way through the molding and next to the duct down into the basement. Now the challenge was getting those wires pulled through that uh, molding without taking it off. And I had to slot this one with my oscillating multi-tool uh, so that I could uh, what I did was I stuck a, a copper wire from one end all the way through to the other and then I had to pull it out in the middle here uh, and that slot helped me grab onto it and pull it through and that way I could pull the wiring uh, through the through the whole molding. It was not easy, I'm not gonna lie. It was very difficult. But uh, I think it was easier than uh, cutting holes in the drywall and having to repatch everything again, which is a massive mess. So hopefully this was easier.